Good evening and welcome to Burlington Baptist Good Friday service. We're just so thankful that you're joining with us today. You know, Good Friday is a day in which we focus on the fact that Jesus Christ bore our sins on the cross. And in John 19.30, Jesus made a simple statement. He said, it is finished. And whether people try to believe this in today's day and age, he wasn't giving up as Satan had hoped. But what he was stating was that his father had finished his plan and accepted Jesus Christ as the sacrifice so we could all find forgiveness. Let us focus on that, this Good Friday service. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house. We thank you to all of our friends that are joining us for this service. And whether we're near or far, Father, we know that you're present and your Holy Spirit guides us. We thank you most of all for your son, Jesus Christ, who hung on a cross and died such a hard death in order that we might find salvation and have eternity with you. So, Father, in this time, hear our praise as we sing. Hear the words that you shared with us through your word as Brother Harold comes and brings those. And just know in our hearts, Father, that we are thankful, oh, so thankful, during this Easter season. We pray all these things in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, good evening, and uh, we are happy that you are joining in with us this evening. Um, we picked a lot of songs for this Good Friday service that we think kind of reflect the mood of that, um, that day that Jesus went to Calvary and, and hung on that, on that tree. So um, if you know the words to these, we want you to sing along with us and, um, and just uh, really pay attention to the words. Bound. 
arms up and wide and here you say my life here I bow here I bow at the cross at the cross I surrender my life I'm in all of you I'm in all of you where your love ran red and my sin washed white I owe all to you I owe all to you at the cross at the cross I surrender my life I'm in all of you I'm in all of you where your love cross at the cross I surrender my life I'm in all of you I'm in all of you when your love ran red and my sin washed white I owe all to you I owe all to you Jesus Um, as we sing this next song, <clears throat> I like to uh, really put myself in the position of, of kind of listening to the words and, and, and what's going on uh, inside of there. And, and Courtney was talking about on the way over listening to the song and just getting so emotional about uh, the nails in your hand and the hammer and, and being that one who would nail. And I know we want to pretend sometimes that we would be the ones going, no, don't, don't do it, don't do it like John and, and Mary at the base of the cross. But uh, I think maybe sometimes I feel like I would have been one of those people holding him up there. So um, we're going to sing this for you. cold between my fingertips I hidden in the garden I've denied you with my very lips God I fall down to my knees with a hammer in my head you look at me arms open Forgive it, forgive it. Child, there is freedom from all of it. Say goodbye to every sin. You are forgiven. I've done things. I wish I hadn't done I've seen things I wish I hadn't seen Just the thought of your amazing grace And I cry, Jesus, forgive me God, I fall down to my knees With a hammer in my head Look at me, arms open, forgive it, forgive it. Child, there is freedom from all of it. Say goodbye to every sin, you are forgiven. been six feet under I could have been lost forever yes you'll be in that fire but now there's a fire inside of me here I am a dead man walking no grave gonna hold God's people all the way to all our evil lifted away forever free who could believe who could believe for 
I ask you to pray with us here. Lord, we just thank you so much for this opportunity to come and just uh, try to give you worship that's deserving of the gift that you gave us, Lord. We know we're going to fall short, um, but we're going to try, Lord, and just thank you so much for that gift, um, and thank you for having me on your mind when you hung on that tree. And Lord, just, uh, we just want to just uh, lift our country up and the world up, Lord, as we go through this together. Um, no discrimination on what's going on or anything, Lord, that we just uh, are bound together as human beings, Lord, and we know that you are in charge of all of it, and we just thank you so much for that, and that we have the comfort that we're in your care. Lord, just continue to bless us and, and bless our church and all the churches that are, that are just adapting and, and just still trying to bring this message of Jesus on the cross to people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, this song is uh, one that was a request at one point, and uh, it's just really, really fitting to think about all the things that are going on today, and uh, when you look around, Jesus is always there. Every time I try to make it on my own Every time I try to stand and start to fall I know you the only road that I have traveled on There was Jesus When the life I built came crashing to the ground when the friends I had were nowhere to be found I couldn't see it then, but I can see it now There was Jesus In the waiting, in the searching In the healing and the hurting Like a blessing buried in the broken pieces Every minute, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know it, I couldn't see it. There was Jesus. For oh, this man who needs amazing kind of grace, for forgiveness of a price I couldn't pay. I'm not perfect, so I thank God every day. There was Jesus. There was Jesus. In the waiting, in the searching, in the healing and the hurting, like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Every minute, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know it, I couldn't see it. There was Jesus on the mountain in the valley. There was Jesus in the 
shadows of the alley. There was Jesus in the fire and in the flood. There was Jesus always is and always was. I never walk alone. I will be there in the way. In the searching, in the healing, in the hurting, like a blessing buried in a broken piece. Every minute, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know it, I couldn't see it. There was Jesus. There was Jesus. There was Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, the ladies picked this song, and uh, from the start to the end, uh, this song just talks about the, the wonderful, wonderful gift of grace that we got on the cross, and um, I'm going to sing that for you.
That's worthy of a hallelujah, I think. Thank you, praise team. And this is such an important day for Christians. Good Friday, the day that our sin debt was paid, paid in full, uh, paid by our Lord who came to save sinners. And uh, I just feel like we ought to start with prayer uh, before we jump in the Word. And so pray with me tonight. Father, we, we want to bow in your presence and uh, we realize that this is such a significant day, Good Friday. And it's almost like when we come to the, the foot of the cross on this day, we, we're on holy ground. And uh, we just want to remember and reflect and uh, be amazed by what you would do for us. And as the praise team just sang, we praise the Father for giving the Son. And we praise Jesus for giving himself. We praise you, Holy Spirit. We, we praise you, God. Three in one. And uh, our great desire tonight is for you to be lifted up uh, because you came and paid for our sins, something we could never do. You've made a way for us to spend eternity with you, and, and we realize that we're wretched sinners. We're in great need of a Savior. And our prayer tonight, even as, as we worship you, is that some might hear about your sacrifice and, and realize your love and turn from their sins and believe and be brought into the family. Oh, Lord, we would rejoice in that, and so we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would speak these next few minutes through your word, and that Christ would be uh, lifted up, glorified, uh, put at a place where he is worthy of, and we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Well, we wish you could be here with us tonight, but uh, it's been a blessed time just worshiping with our praise team. I hope you've had a great Holy Week. Uh, even in the midst of coronavirus, I hope that you have had some time to reflect upon the events surrounding the cross. And uh, we gather tonight just with thankful hearts uh, because uh, we've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And uh, just thankful that God would step out of heaven and come and, and save us. And we've been talking about the events of that final week of Jesus' life, and Sunday we talked about his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, and the people uh, laid down their, their palm branches and their clothes, and they shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And uh, we know that uh, Jesus looked over Israel, and he wept for them, and the condition that they were in, and, and we should probably weep more over the lostness of our land. We know on Monday, him and the disciples went to the temple, and it's when he overturned the, the money changers and uh, cast them out. Uh, he cursed the fig tree because it had no fruit. And uh, just so many things to, to think about that last week of his life. I, I wonder how many of us tonight, maybe uh, uh, we look good on the outside, but we're not bearing fruit. And I just want to say during this time of uh, isolation, such a good time to grow as followers of Jesus, get in his word and spend time with him and, and teach your, your family about him. Well, during the week he taught at the temple, he, he answered questions, he, he even told about the destruction of Jerusalem. Uh, we know that uh, during the week that uh, Judas decided that he would uh, uh, betray Jesus, and so he went and bargained with the, the chief priest. Uh, we know that on Thursday evening, it, he, we believe, is when he observed Passover with his disciples uh, he took time and, and washed the feet of his disciples, and uh, he predicted that one of his disciples would betray him. And uh, 
And then he, uh, after while observing the Passover meal, he instituted uh, the Lord's Supper. And, and uh, usually on Good Friday, we're able to gather and observe the Lord's Supper. And we long for the day when we can get back together in this room and partake of the elements and be reminded of the, the body and the blood that was uh, broken and shed for us. And, and Jesus established a new covenant uh, through his body and his blood and the scriptures tells us after that that they sang a hymn and they, they went out to the Mount of Olives to a place called the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, Jesus prayed with fervency about the events that were about to take place. And, and during that time, Judas leads this band of Roman soldiers and the chief priests and the scribes, and they come there. And, and we know G- Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss, and they arrested him. Uh, Matthew chapter 26 tells us about this unofficial trial that takes place at Caiaphas, who's the, the high priest at his home. And, and uh, it was there in the courtyard that Peter three times denied knowing Jesus. Well, Jesus is kept there throughout the night. And, and uh, early in the morning, uh, we pick up in chapter 27 of, of Matthew, verse 2 says, that, And they bound him and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate the governor. Most of us know this story pretty well. Uh, people now begin to demand that Jesus be crucified. And, and Pilate, who is the biggest coward in history, uh, has an innocent man scourged and then sentenced Jesus to be crucified. And again, Pilate knew he was innocent, uh, but he was a coward. And uh, we know that that day that Jesus would be mocked and beaten and spit upon, struck in the head, uh, they would drive... Uh, thorns into his head, and and then he would uh, be given a cross to which he is to carry up a hill called Calvary. Uh, we know that after that all-night fiasco, uh, this illegal trial and this scourging and this mocking, that Jesus would be nailed to a cross around nine in the morning, the third hour. And so tonight we pick up in Matthew 27, and I just want to read some verses here, verse 45 uh, through 56. Now, from the sixth hour, and again, that's uh, early in the morning, or that's noon, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabatini, that is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders heard it, and they said, This man's calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see if, whether Elijah will come uh, to save him. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, the rocks were split, the tombs were opened, and many of bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe, and they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were also women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. Uh, Just tonight, I want us to consider the scenes at the cross. Verse 45 says that around noon, the sixth hour, Christ has been hanging on the cross for about three hours. and, And he's been taunted by this vicious crowd. And the divine son of God is... Uh, surely about to reach the point of exhaustion. Uh, And then there is this supernatural phenomenon that takes place. Uh, It's noon, and so the sun is at its zenith, and yet there is darkness that falls over the whole earth, and uh, the darkness could be felt. And I I don't know if we can imagine what the people around that scene might might have felt and thought. And there are different speculations about the reason for the darkness, Some suggest that nature dropped a a veil covering the suffering of Christ, uh, her creator. Uh, Some think that that maybe God is covering the nakedness and dishonor of his son. Uh, Darkness, though, is is a a sort of divine protest, some suggest, and many reasons. But one thing that we find in Scripture is that darkness is always a sign of divine judgment. Now, Jesus is described as the light, and God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. 
But judgment is always accompanied by darkness. And so as we consider the, the scene of the cross, the darkness there, let's critique some of the sentiments of the cross. Verse 46 says, about the ninth hour. Again, 3 o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice. Uh, uh, he cries out, Eli, Eli, Labat, Sabatini. Uh, some of the sentiments around the cross, some, some misunderstood. Jesus uh, is speaking here in Hebrew, and so the, the Roman guards, they, they, they don't understand. Verse 47 says that uh, some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. Now, there were lots of misunderstandings about the cross, and, and even today, the cross is foolishness to, to some. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1.18, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. To many in the world, the, this whole thing about God coming and dying on the cross is foolishness. But Paul says, but to those of us who are being saved, it is the power of God. It's the power of God that we come to celebrate tonight. And so some misunderstood, but, but some mocked. Notice in verse 49, uh, but the others said, wait, let's see if, whether Elijah will come to, to save him. And so this, um, despite this darkness in the middle of the day, and, and these signs of judgment, uh, some just did not comprehend, and they wanted to continue to scorn and mock and humiliate the son. And so they say, well, let's just see if, if he's crying out for Elijah, let's see if Elijah shows up to save him. And, you know, today people still mock and scorn God. Uh, they shake their fists towards God, and, and they deny his existence. They deny the atoning work of the cross, and... and uh, Romans 14, 11 says this, For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. One day, listen, we can be sure, in the end, God will not be mocked. Amen. So, uh, some misunderstood, some mocked, but then in verse 54, some marveled. Now, again, it's hard to imagine all that's taking place, the, the darkness, the earthquakes, the rock splitting. Um, and, and yet it says there in verse 54, when the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, when they saw this, when they saw the darkness and the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe. Probably an understatement. And they said, truly, this was the Son of God. Listen, maybe their, their eyes were open to what was going on and the sacrifice that was being made. And, and uh, it's hard to know whether this is just intellectual uh, acknowledgement. But, but Luke says in Luke 23, 47, that they began praising God. And so some marveled. And then we see some mourned. The ladies there, uh, verse 55, many women there looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee. Uh, these ladies love Jesus, and there they are again uh, at the foot of the cross, mourning over his passing. They're faithful. Uh, the great Bible expositor G. Campbell Morgan describes women as these women as hopeless, disappointed, bereaved, heartbroken. But the love he had created in the in their hearts for him could not be quenched, even by his dying, could not be overcome even though they were disappointed, could not be extinguished, even though light of hope had gone out and over the sea of their sorrow, they, there was no sign wind that told of the dawn. And so Matthew uh, records some of the sentiments that were there around the cross. And I, I'm going to ask you tonight, what, what is your sentiment about the cross? Do you, do you marvel at the cross? Do you say, truly, that is the Son of God who's dying on that cross for me, the one who stepped out of heaven and came to my rescue? I was hopeless. I was hellbound, and God would step out and come for me. Uh, thirdly, I'd just like for us to comprehend the sacrifice of the cross. If, if we go back to the book of Genesis, there's a guy named Abraham. And in Genesis 22, Abraham's asked to sacrifice his son, Isaac. 
And we know that he's going to go through with it. And he takes Isaac upon the mountain and he, he pulls out the knife. And as he is about to take the life of his son, the angel of the Lord steps in and stops him. And, and we know that the, the angel provides a, a ram as a substitute, as a, a sacrifice for his son. And Abraham doesn't have to sacrifice his son, but, but this time it's much different. God would allow his own son, his one and only son, to become a sacrifice for the sins of the world. And he would allow men, sinful men, to drive nails through the wrist and the feet of Jesus and allow his son to hang on the cross. Verse 50 says, And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And so despite the agony of the cross, Jesus is able to cry out, with a loud voice. And we, we talk about some of the last words on the cross. One of the things that Jesus said is, Till Telestai, it's finished. The, the work has been complete. And he says at the end, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. And it says here that he yielded up his spirit. He, he lets go. He sends it away. You know, Jesus' life wasn't taken from him. He surrendered his spirit by his own will. In John 10, 18, he said to the disciples, I lay it down on my own initiative. I I have the authority to lay it down, and I have the authority to take it up again. And then briefly tonight, let's conclude, concede the supernatural at the cross. There was lots of things going on around the cross. Uh, First, there was this ripping. Verse 51 says, uh, Behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. In the inner, uh, inner sanctuary of the temple, there was this area called the Holy of Holies. And, and uh, there's this huge woven veil that separated the Holy of Holies from the rest of the temple. And the Holies of Holies represented the, the presence of, of God. And once a year, the, the high priest could go uh, past the veil on the Day of Atonement and, and sprinkle the blood on the altar. But when Christ gave up the Spirit, this His once for all sacrifice had been completed and this veil is torn because there is no longer a need for this separation. And, and really what God is saying is that because my Son has died for sin, there is now total access into my presence through my Son Jesus Christ, through His blood. We, we now, we celebrate that. We have access to God through the blood. We come with boldness to the throne room of God through the blood of Jesus. Uh, good news, uh, because we now have direct access to God. What a, what a gift. Then there were some ruptures. Uh, immediately after Jesus died, the veil was torn. Verse 51 goes on and says, And the earth shook, and the rocks were split. God shook the earth when the sun died. And I, I think that might be a foretaste of, of how the world will be shaken one day when the sun returns as judge and king of the world. And he will bring judgment and he will establish his kingdom. We, we see a foretaste of that. Then there were some resurrections. Verse 52 says the tombs also were opened. I, I can't imagine what that looks like, but many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. And so there was some resurrection of the saints, and, and after the resurrection, they appeared in Jerusalem, and I, I don't know how to describe that, but it happened. And so what I want you to know is this is no mere crucifixion, and God was no mere man. He's the God-man. And then finally, and most importantly, let's cherish the significance of of the cross. Verse 46, the ninth hour, three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, a scream, a, a passionate groan. And of all the words spoken on the cross, the most staggering, maybe the most significant, and Jesus here quotes from Psalm 22 1, and uh, it's so gripping that both Mark and and Matthew both, they quote Jesus exactly. They, they don't translate it. They, the Holy Spirit, I think, wants to preserve the anguish of Jesus' soul. And so, Ale, Ale, Lama, Sabatini, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And uh, listen, if you come back Sunday, I'm going to talk more about that. But why did he cry out, Why have you forsaken me? And church, the reason is because of sin. And you say, Well, Jesus never sinned. And you're right, but he came to be our sin bearer. 2 Corinthians 5.21, for our sake, for us, church, 
And God made him who knew no sin to be made sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus became sin. He took our sin so that we could be made right with God. And so the greatest agony of the cross is when the sinless Son of God became sin, and he endured the righteous wrath of a holy God towards sin. Lots of verses talk about this. Isaiah 53, 5, he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we're healed. 1 Peter 2, 24, Christ bore our sin in his own body on the tree. 1 Peter 3, 18, Christ also has suffered once for sin, the just for the unjust. He was the just one, the sinless one, and he suffered for the sinners. Hebrews 2, 9 says that he has tasted death for every man. And so when we see the agony of our beloved Lord on the cross, we realize that it's all because of sin. And we hate sin. We should hate sin. You know, listen, we, we can't come and try to worship Jesus with sin in our lives. You want to know why? Because sin is the murder weapon. It'd be like trying to take a gun into the White House. You can't get in there with that. And we can't bring our sin. And try to worship God. We've got to confess our sins. Listen, the reason that Jesus went to the cross was for sin. Before we close, just the, the ramifications was our salvation. All we like sheep, Isaiah 53, 6 says, had turned. We went our own ways. And the Father laid on the Son the iniquity, the sin of us all. He, he was the spotless lamb. He was made sin. He took the penalty for our sins. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, and Jesus paid the wages for our sin. Someone said he came to pay a debt he didn't know because we owe a debt we could never pay. Salvation is available. 1 John 4.10 says, In this is love. Not that we've loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation, the, the atoning sacrifice for our sins. That's love. And so when we receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, our, our sins are forgiven. We're declared righteous. We're saved. You can use lots of words, but we're made right with God. And through his death and resurrection, Jesus Christ won the victory over sin and death and hell. And we'll celebrate that on Sunday. The chief of sinners, though I be, Jesus shed his blood for me, died that I might live on high, lives that I may never die. And so as we close tonight, we consider the cross and as the praise team comes, what's been your response to the cross? Have you mocked the cross? Listen, you mock the cross when you reject Christ. Maybe you've come tonight and you come to the cross and you mourn because you're, you've been playing with sin and, and maybe you recognize tonight that you've befriended the murder weapon of Jesus. Maybe tonight you need to confess your sins and, and seek forgiveness. And he offers that. He's gracious. He offers to forgive our sins. And or maybe tonight you come and you just marvel at the cross. We all should do that. We should marvel when we realize that Jesus is the Son of God. The Son of God. And He is hanging on the cross for you and for me. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Let us marvel at God's amazing grace. Father, we stand tonight just amazed by your loving kindness to us. We know you're perfectly holy, and we know you hate sin. We know that we were hopelessly lost in our sins, and but you're rich in mercy. And in your grace and mercy, you sent your son Jesus to, to our rescue. And it was no little rescue. We know the cross was cruel. We know your holy and righteous wrath was poured out upon Jesus. And Jesus would bear it all for our sakes. We marvel tonight at your sacrifice. And we humbly just offer you praise now and forevermore. Thank you for the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. And 
so much for joining us tonight we've had a good time in the lord and uh you're not here but it seems like the spirit's here so thank you praise team and uh before danny closes us in prayer i just want to invite you uh sunday morning we're hoping to have drive-in worship service we'll be out in the lot we'll have deacons kind of uh, directing your traffic uh, you won't be able to get out of your car, but you'll be able to tune in and be able to worship with us, and you'll be able to see and wave at each other. And so we're going to have a 1030 and a 1 o'clock service. Uh, we're, we're asking the Lord to give us some good weather so we can get out and, and praise Him. And uh, we hope you'll join us. We look forward to seeing you. Uh, 
Easter Sunday morning as we celebrate the resurrection. Pray with us. Lord, thank you so much again for this opportunity to just uh, just worship, Lord, and just uh, to just kind of try to worship you um, in, the, in the presence of what this day means, Lord, of Jesus on the cross with us on his mind and our sin and paying for that so that we don't have to, that he made us righteous. Lord, we just thank you so much for that. Uh, Lord, just continue to bless us and bless this church and, and the people, uh, your church, not just here but everywhere, Lord, and just protect us and um, just help us through this time and help us to help each other and reach out. Lord, just help us to just continue to, uh, to spread the word of Jesus and what he means to us and help us to show people as we come in contact with them, uh, with what little contact we have, Lord. In just Jesus' name we pray. Amen.